have you met people who seemingly are influential or whatever but when people discuss about them and their back it's all one. if you get to know Jesus you won't want to see him being disgraced being talked about sharply that is the meaning of that second part how many of you truly want to see God glorified on earth do you know how Jesus prayed as he was ending? I have glorified thee on earth. Have you finished the work you gave me? How many of you want to see Jesus known by more people? How many of you? That's it. Do you want to see God glorified? Those parts, does it matter to you? God's need, not just your own need. That's the point. God's need for worship. God's need to have his name known among the nations. God's need to have himself, make himself known to people. Do you know what he told Moses? Don't worry about the miracles. Do you know why I want to complete it to 10? That Egyptians might know that I'm God. He said, and then I also wonder the children of Israel will know that I'm God. So that my name will be sanctified among their eyes. God is jealous over his name. He's looking for people who care about that. Who care about that. I'm, 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 I'm you know, they constrained him. They begged him, abide with us. Everyone say, Jesus, abide with me. For it is towards evening. And the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Remember the word constraint. That word constraint is not just, I ask once. It's to actually put pressure on somebody to change a person's mind. In other words, probably when they said, come in initially, he said, no, he wanted to continue. But they know. When they showed that they were serious, he followed them. And the Bible said, mm, he sat at the table, verse 30. It came to pass as he sat at the table with them. Notice the four things he did here. He took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it. It's called the four order of the breaking of bread. Please, can I get that board? You know? The four order of the breaking of bread. If you are typing, you can type it. The four order of the breaking of bread. And the order is simple. The four order. I will come back to it next time. I will come back to it. Remember, in preaching, we feast on the word. But in communion, we feast on the Lord. <laughs> Remember that. It's he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood. Feasting on the Lord is a higher level. It's a higher level. It's a he that eats my flesh, drinks my blood, shall live by me just like I live by the Father. He said, whosoever does that will have eternal life. Watch the first thing is that he took bread. He takes. Second, that he blesses. I'm going to do it as I break bread this morning. He, he blesses. The third is that he breaks. Then the fourth is that he gives. That's the four order of the blessing of bread. I wish you have a, a bigger loaf. You have the small, small ones. He takes it. He blesses it. Sometimes you read in some other part of the Bible. The Bible says, when he takes it, he gives thanks. Is that, is that, you find it in the Bible? Then he breaks it. Then he gives it. He took bread. He blessed the bread. He broke the bread. And he gave it. And what was the result? At that moment. Notice. Verse 31. Then. Project the scripture. Project the scripture. Verse 31. Then. Their eyes were opened. And they knew him. You want to enter into that dimension. Communion is one of the gateways. 
to the highest level of revelation there is at that moment their eyes when he broke that bread something also broke on their eyes it's called the veil the veil that blocks men from seeing god the way he is that veil was broken remember the moment they broke his body they crucified him he was hanging on the cross the moment one of those soldiers took javelin a spear and pierced his body this side and he pierced his heart blood and water came out on the cross that moment the veil in the temple that was blocking the holiest of holies was torn from top to bottom if you don't know what that veil was doing he kept the presence of God inside. There is the ark of covenant and the Shekinah glory in the holiest of holies. But only one man, and that's the high priest, is allowed to come in. The rest of the people were kept outside. That veil was not there from day one. It was the day some priests died. God told Moses that there has to be a barrier. That you can't allow them to be coming in since they don't know how to work with me. Let only one man come to represent the whole nation. So can you imagine a nation of three million people only one man knows God well the rest are just no wonder sometimes they will make idols when they look for this thing it's not working they join Oboni they look for it it's not working they go to Babich and look for white garment to wash their head they don't know God there are all kinds of things going on in Christianity today there is what is called syncretism mixing Christianity with other African traditional religion you carry champu why? they don't know him they don't know him. There's a veil on their eyes. There's a veil on their eyes. As you come to the communion table today, you're going to enter another dimension. Another dimension of revelation. Another dimension of revelation. There's something that will happen to your life. There's something that will happen to your ministry. There's something. Ah, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. Lift up your hands. You're going to pray. Hey, come you are going to press into the, the, the another dimension where a few people have learned to walk. The dimension of knowing him as he is. Hebrews chapter 10 and that will be the last scripture I read today. Hebrews chapter 10. The Lord asked me to emphasize this. The Lord asked me to emphasize this. Chapter 10. I was telling him, I said, I had a whole week that was filled every single day. I said, Lord, I need to rest one or two days before I start. I'm going to be having a whole week in the U.S. this week again. He said, you want rest? I say yes. You want renewal? I say yes. He said communion, communion. Press in there. And even now, I'm not taking communion. I'm completely new. I'm ready for another six weeks. It's a mystery. I can't explain this thing. I don't know how to explain it to another person. There are some things you know you lack words. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Have you seen? Is that place that only one man used to where the veil locks out the treasure. God is hidden there. The treasure, everything we're looking for is there. But there is a veil. People can access it. How can a man walk with people for hours, seven hours, get to where they can see they, don't, they didn't know who he was. Some of us have walked with Jesus for eight years and yet we don't know him. Some have walked with him for a year. They don't have a clue. No. We have boldness to enter the holiest of all by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil. Access into behind the veil. Access into what lies behind the veil. And he explains what that veil is. He said, that is his flesh. Did you see now when he broke this moment when he broke the bread? There is something that happens at this stage. There is something that happens at this stage. There is something that happens at this stage. At this stage now, the man becomes a blessing to the world. 
just like the communion will serve it produces healing it produces the man that has passed this stage at this stage also becomes a carrier of healing carrier of redemption carrier of solutions but this is where there's something that happens at this stage is when his flesh was broken the veil was broken through a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is what his flesh somebody asked me what is the meaning of that i said the reason a lot of people did not know jesus is because of that body that he put on you remember that when god appeared to moses when he came at the mount sinai the man that came almost melted the whole mountain the glory of god shook the whole place for 40 days is the same man but because all that thing is compressed inside a human body so paul will write he said henceforth we knew no no man after the flesh i used to know jesus after the flesh you know what paul the apostle that was persecuting the church was alive when jesus walked on earth in age he's a contemporary of peter or maybe a little younger than him but he was there was a young man and he didn't believe in all that message he was a, one of those pharisees and sadducees why? He said, I used to see him like a normal man. You know, at one time he would come to his village where he was raised up. They said, is that not Joseph's, Joseph's son? Don't we know his sisters? Is that not the carpenter's son? What was hidden behind the veil, they did not know. Now, hear him again. He has risen from the dead. He appears. He's walking with these two guys. And they could recognize him. One day he took three of them to the Mount of Transfiguration before he even died. And in the place of prayer, he opened that veil. Because prayer does that again. There's a dimension you press in in prayer. You cross that boundary. And he was transfigured before them. And then Moses and Elijah came. And they were discussing. You cannot know Jesus from the flesh. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. He's more than a man. He's more than a man. To become one of those that will carry life-changing revelation to the nations, you cannot know him just as a man. And probably you think he's one of the prophets. You see what they were discussing on their way. When he broke, the glorified Christ was unveiled. And sometimes when people see him like that, they, the light self dazzles their eyes and he disappeared from them. They did not stay that night. Too. It was already late. They were worried about him. Don't go come in. It's already late. The day is fast. But they themselves did not stay. They took off back the whole journey back to church. What carried them back this time they didn't know? To go and find others. To announce to them that Jesus is risen. One of the things that amazed me about their preaching is that when they finished preaching, the other people were doubting. Jesus showed up to confirm their words. Communion opens our eyes to see him. Communion opens our eyes. But for a man who wants to press him, whose heart is crying after God, communion breaks the veil and gives you access. It does. It does. I see you walking another level of revelation, another level of, you know, even anointing and glory for now, after today, after today, after today. That particular thing is specific in the heart of God. Your Christian life will experience a shift. Definitely there will be a shift in your prayer life. There will be a shift in, even in the level of faith you are operating. Finally. Every one of you that wants to walk with God will know you have to pass these four stages. God takes people. He takes things. He blesses it. He breaks it before he gives it to become a blessing to the world. That's what he did with me. Before God gave me to start being a blessing to the nations, he took me from my father's house. He sent me to school to go and study, prepare to be a medical doctor. 
That's the dream they had for me. I wanted to follow their dream in order to please my parents. From one in secondary school, the Lord collects me from my secondary school. And I thought, okay, I'll give you my life. I'll just serve you. I end up, ended up a chapel prefect, ended up the president of the student Christian movement. Of course, I founded a fellowship in the school because we didn't have a fellowship before then. And I, was, I did all that. I did, was a good boy. I served God with my teen life. And I was saying in my mind, okay, by the time I go to university, he will leave me alone. Because I don't, I don't want to be a preacher. I had no, it, you know, maybe some people will become preachers by desire. I, I had never had any such desire. I argued with the Lord when he started, appeared to me at the age of 12 and said he wanted me to do this assignment. And I argued with him and I negotiated with him. And I told him I would be giving him 20% tight. You need people to sponsor the gospel. And God said, it's not money that I need. I own all the money. He said, my greatest heart cry is a vessel to unveil my glory on earth. And you, you, you. And um, God took me. My parents felt that they lost me. By the time I got into the university, it was obvious they were, I had gone over. I started ministry in school. I wasn't doing president or a school or whatever. I was in full-time ministry. And so my father slapped me with, you know, disowned me for a while. No kobo, no nothing, or whatever. I think around that time, around that period, who knows, and a little after it, the process of breaking started. I, I will not tell you the details, but I first enjoyed a blessing. An astounding ministry he shook the school. I actually thought I had fulfilled a great commission. I used to say when Jesus said, go to the, from Jerusalem to Judea to all the ends of the earth, that I have gone from Isakaita Hostel to Six Flats. That's my campus, the hostels in it. I have gone around, so the end of the world. I thought I had reached the world. Before God breaks you, he blesses you. That's what he does. When God takes you, he changes what your parents planned or even what you planned for yourself. Don't be afraid. But when the breaking was going on, I said, Lord, okay, my father has abandoned me, everything. Okay. Okay, what else again? I didn't know this is what... This whole thing is all. When God takes you, he blesses you first. Many of you are here. Many of you are still being taken. Some are here. I want you to know this is coming. You are not going to have a deep walk with God unless you pass it. But then where you see breaking, where you see the cross do his work, that's where you see resurrection. That's where you find a mighty man, a woman of God. Are you somebody hearing what I'm saying? Read about Catherine Kuma. You will see when she finally had the end, the death experience of her life. God takes people. He blesses them first. I know some of you are enjoying here. Oh, good job. Career. Someone like Uju, when she tells me, oh, even why the whole country is collapsing, God is really, you know, God is faithful. He takes her. Don't worry, be coming on the journey. Share you want God to use you. Unless you don't want to know Jesus. I wish when you say, God, I want to be your friend, it's just like that. When you tell God, I want to be your friend, like Abraham, there will be circumcision before that friendship. First friendship is found here. God took Jesus from Mary's parents, you know. Remember when the struggle was going? Did you know I will be about my father's business? Don't you know your father and I have been struggling and looking for you? He blessed them with the most powerful ministry Israel has ever seen. It was more, more powerful than what Moses and others did. That's what this boy talking about. He was mighty in war than he did. He blessed him with wisdom. He blessed him with a kind of anointing that nobody has ever. The ministry was so successful that even the Sahendrins, the Pharisees, they were jealous. Then he took him to the cross and broke him. When he raised him from the dead, he gave him to be the blessing, the redeemer of the whole world. 
this is where there are two blessings there is a blessing before breaking there is a blessing after breaking the real blessing is here there is this Potiphar's house blessing there is now when you are sitting in your vision see your dream come to pass fully I say Joseph you are now the prime minister of Egypt is somebody hearing what I'm saying but this in Potiphar's house, you are manager of Potiphar's house. You are in charge of everything. You think you're doing well. I'm MD in Orlando. I'm this in this company. Thank you. That's not the plan, the big thing God has for you. But between here and when you are going to sit in your domain, and when you get here, God takes you on that journey from one level to another till the end of the journey. This is where your promised land is. For Jesus, he sat at the right hand of God. He's now king of kings, lord of lords. He's now the savior of the world. No one can come to the father. But at this point, he was enjoying a blessed ministry, heavily anointed, healing the sick, raising the dead. But something was waiting for him after that ministry. The cross. God took Joseph. He blessed him in Potiphar's house in Egypt. Made him a manager, made him intelligent, you know, wealthy business man, but managing another man's company. And he was very successful. Then he raised a woman, Potiphar's wife, and breaking started. And the man ends up in prison. How can, after testing the blessing, I'm now in the prison. But then when God broke him, he brought him out and made him a prime minister over Egypt and the one that saved the world from famine. God took Moses. He blessed him in Pharaoh's house. He became the prince of Egypt. He became the heir apparent to the throne. And when everything looked like he was all good, he broke him in the backside of the desert. 40 years of breaking. I have never seen anyone long like that. 40 years? 40 years after being the prince of Egypt? He was trying to do something good though, when they started. He killed an Egyptian in defense of a Jew. And then the trouble started. But then right at the end of the break, Jehovah shows himself to him at the burning bush and gives him a rod and makes him the deliverer over the nation of Israel. The purpose of the breaking is to reveal the deliverer. If Jesus did not go to the cross, he will not be our savior. If you Joseph did not go through breaking. He will not be the prime minister. Yes, there is a blessing before breaking. I thank God that he blessed me before he broke me. If he didn't bless me before he, break, he started breaking me, I would have thought he hated me. But even in my case, when the thing gets too tough, I'll remember some of the good old days. I remember when I, things were, I would say it, he does it. But now you cry, it looks like nobody's answering. Now you cry, it looks like nothing is happening. Yes! Don't laugh at anybody who is in the breaking stage because you are in the blessing stage. The guy is ahead of you in class. In the school of promotion. He's ahead of you. When you see somebody going through breaking, don't laugh at him. There are sometimes it looks like people who love you are withdrawn. It looks like you are misunderstood. It looks like nobody understands you. Don't worry. That's when God is trying to teach you that you need to walk, have a closer walk with him. Because sometimes when we are surrounded with people that are praising us, telling us all the good things, we don't grow. We, the flesh start growing. Pride start growing. In the place of breaking, God circumcises the heart. God circumcises the foreskin of the heart. God destroys pride until there was nothing to boast of anymore. That's when I was so emptied up. That little boy that was the best student, whatever, filled with pride and serving God. Oh, I didn't know. When I meet believers who make mistakes, I say, how can a Christian do this kind of thing? Once you see Christians who talk like that, they have not been broken. My daughter, I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. Once you see believers who always flash, slap other believers, I can't imagine that man of God so he could do that kind of thing. He's not a real man of God. Uh, that believer, no. They need to come to my level. There's a level I'm, you know. Don't worry. You have a date with the cross. It's coming. You have a date, appointment with the cross. You have a point because God is looking for redeemers who will have compassion on those that are fallen, who will know God so much, but they can still con connect with people. Don't worry, don't worry. 
because I was holy. I have not had all any experience, anything, you know, born again at the age of 12, you know, good boy. I can't understand uh, why somebody who gave his life is now. Nobody followed me up. I followed myself up. So what is all this about going for follow up? Huh? What is all this about even preaching to you? I didn't understand all this. I will lamp. When the thing finished with me, I had no, no mouth to boast. There was nothing good left. It was at that moment I had my second appearance of Christ. And he was saying, now nah, I'm going to use it. I said, no, no, no Lord. I, I used to believe you could use me before. Now there is nothing. Please just leave me. Let me go and get a job. They have a job for me in NMPC. Let me get it. I'm living a good, quiet life. Please. He said, now you are ready for the assignment. That's you before. Couldn't have done this. You wouldn't have carried it. Lift up your hands. Oh. <laughs> there is a journey. <laughs> there, is a, there is a journey. There is a journey in, in being, you know, God calls Abraham, my friend, but as a man that has been circumcised. There is a journey. There is a journey. There's a journey. There's a journey the Holy Spirit is going to take you. There's a journey. There's a journey. It was later when I learned this, I said, Lord, oh, I wish I knew. It would have helped me when I was in the school of breaking. I, if, I, it was so confusing. I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand what was going on. As if somebody even tampered with my intelligence in those days. I can't explain it. But it works in other areas, but I can't explain it. You know, in those days, sometimes I walk into class and I, I feel like a stranger here. I don't, I don't know how to explain what somebody went through. There are some parts that there's no need talking about. But there's always a second coming for every Jesus. There's always a second coming for every Joseph. You can sell him into slavery. A day is coming when you will meet him. But when you meet him, it won't be that small boy. It will be the prime minister. There's always a second coming for every Jesus. You can crucify him on the cross, but you're going to meet him again. But this time, it will be the king of kings riding on a white horse. There's always a second coming for every Moses. It won't be that one you saw in Egypt. It will be the deliverer carrying the rod, dividing the Red Sea. Yes. Yes. If you are in the middle of breaking, break hearts. I am sent to tell you this morning. There is something greater that is coming ahead of you. Jesus saw the glory that was laid before him. And he endured the cross. He took the shame. It looks like things are against you. Take heart. There is something big that is coming. God has to work on you before he works for you. God has to work in your character, in your life before he walks through you. God has to clean the vessel before he fills it. Lift up your hand and tell him, Lord, I healed myself. Wherever. If it takes the cross to bring me to glory, I don't mind. If it takes whatever, I don't mind. I lay my life down before you. There is a new church that is going to emerge. There is a new dominance. A new church that is going to emerge in this last hour. It's going to be that militant church. That glorious church that will deliver the mandate of Jesus. There is a new glory. There is like the butterfly. The mad God that is throwing off his cocoon. So that it can become the butterfly. There is a metamorphosis that is going on. That is going to bet the glorious church. I give you praise. I give you thanks. Even me I place my life back in. I know we have not even started this journey. We are just at the verge of River Jordan. We may have gone through the wilderness, but there is the land, the land of nations out there to possess. Father, I put my hands back in your hands. I put my hands. Is that your mighty hand that holds us? Take us into the future that you have planned. Take us into the next phase of this mandate, Lord. I lay my life down again before you. Have your way. Have your way. As we knock down giants after another. And take nations after nations. And take Jericho and all the cities that will follow it. Have your way, Lord. It cannot be done by the power of the flesh. It cannot be done by the power of man. It cannot be done by human wisdom. 
have your way have your way have your way i call for today a new army to emerge out of this valley of dry bones i call forth out of this place out of this island out of this lagos out of all over nigeria a new army to emerge the militant church that can take care of this entire mandate out of this one that look like they are weak out of this one that look like they are nobodies out of this one that look like they don't know their left when they are right father let that anoint that mighty hand of god fall to erase a mighty army for your holy name oh my god oh yeah